Hello, friends, family, and internet strangers. Stephanie here, and today my video is gonna fall. Hello, friends, family, and internet strangers. Stephanie here, and today's video is all about cakes and pies and cookies and all the things. I have got a cake recipe and a pie recipe for you today, but this video is part of a collaboration hosted by Tiffany over at Small Town Six, so I will have her channel linked in the description box down below, as well as a link to the playlist with all of the other cake cookie pie videos <laughs> that are going to be posted. So make sure if you are here from my channel watching that you go check out that playlist and see all the other great inspiration for recipes. And if you are here from the playlist, let me know down in the comments, but let's get right into it. First up, I've got a salted caramel apple cake. Now this is a take on an apple cake recipe that my neighbors back at home make. So Thank you, Mark and Candace, for this recipe. And this is something that my mom requests anytime she's hosting a party and they ask what they can bring. At this point, I think they just know that's what they're going to bring anytime there's a family crisis. In fact, today, my mom was on the phone with me. She had a knee replacement a few days ago, and she said, Candace stopped by. She brought apple cake. And I said, did you tell her that I was going to be doing it in a video? So hello, Candace, if you're watching. So I am starting out with apples. They are chopped up. I used two Granny Smith apples and three Gala apples, and that made up the four cups that the recipe called for. I doused those in stevia. The recipe calls for sugar, but I only had a very small amount of sugar left, and I was saving it for the salted caramel portion of the recipe that I was making. So I used the stevia. It just is in this big container that will not go away. No matter how hard I try, I cannot ditch this big container of stevia. So I really didn't taste a difference. Texture-wise, I think it made a little bit of a difference, but taste-wise, I still very much enjoyed this cake. So I have mixed up my dry ingredients, which is flour, baking soda, salt, and cinnamon. I did add a little extra cinnamon. I also added cinnamon to the apples. If you are new here, welcome. I hope you'll stick around. You'll learn very quickly. I really like cinnamon and I do not go by measurements with cinnamon. That's something that you measure with your heart. I also did a little bit extra vanilla in mine as well. So this was half a cup of oil, two eggs, and two teaspoons plus a little bit extra of vanilla. This is going to go right into that container with my dry ingredients and get all mixed up. I am then going to add in my apples and I'm also going to add in my chopped walnuts. So I did one cup of chopped walnuts. So for this part of the recipe, with the exception of a little bit of extra cinnamon and vanilla and the stevia, this was pretty much the same as the way my neighbors make this. So the main thing that I noticed with this recipe that I would do differently if making this again, I used too big of a pan for this and it was very, very thin. So the batter was not cakey enough and I think that's partially the stevia and partially I used way too small of a pan so you can see that it looks almost more like a dough consistency here but it did taste good so I do still recommend it and I'm going to post the original recipe without my alterations down in the description box I will have that typed out for you so you can try this recipe if you'd like and again I just recommend using a smaller pan the addition that I made to this is I turned this into a salted caramel version and that required making salted caramel. To do that, it's a very involved process. It's not difficult. It just requires your full undivided attention. If I didn't speed up this video extra, y'all would be watching me push around sugar in a pan for 11 minutes. That is how long this took me from start to finish. That is how long the video was that I sped up. So it just requires stirring constantly. Once your sugar is melted, you add in butter. Once the butter is melted, you slowly drizzle in some heavy cream and then add your salt at the end and mix that in. I am now greasing up my pan. I use butter wrappers when I do this, although this particular butter wrapper was a paper wrapper instead of the wax and it didn't work as well as it normally does. So I followed it up with a little bit of vegetable oil on a paper towel to grease up this pan. And as I mentioned, 
use a smaller one. The recipe called for a smaller one, but I didn't have one the size it called for. Honestly, I think I could have done this in an eight by eight and it still would have been good, possibly even better than it turned out. So I am just making sure all of this is nice and even. And then I am going to drizzle my salted caramel right over the top. Because of how thin this was in the bigger pan, this was only done in half an hour for me. So the recipe says an hour. If you're using a smaller pan, it is going to take longer because it will be thicker. But this is so good. It's got so many apples in it and that really makes it juicy. So definitely recommend this. This normally turns into such a good moist cake. And then once I am done with this, I add a little bit extra caramel on top when I am putting it on my plate in my little serving. And this, you could serve it with ice cream, but our favorite is to just put a big glob of whipped cream, cool whip, right on top is our favorite way to have that. Next up, I've got a marshmallow pumpkin pie. This is one that I saw right here on YouTube on another channel. So I saw this on Ashley Lauren Price's channel. I'll have her channel as well as her video of this linked in the description box below. So y'all can check that out and give her some love on that video. Subscribe to her channel if you haven't already. But I am melting down marshmallows in a pot with a cup, I can't speak anymore, a cup of pumpkin puree, just the pure pumpkin puree, and some seasonings. I did not have pumpkin pie spice, so I used a bunch of the spices that make up pumpkin pie spice in mine, of course, with a little bit of extra cinnamon in there. And once this is all melted down, I'm going to let it cool to room temperature and then add in a tub of Cool Whip. That is what drew me to this recipe. I am not a pumpkin pie fan. So if you are also not a fan of that texture of a thick, rich pumpkin pie, but you like the flavor of pumpkin, I recommend giving this one a try. It was very light and very fluffy, and I very much enjoyed this one. So I am just mixing in all that Cool Whip. And then this is a no-bake recipe. So it's almost like a pumpkin cream pie, except it's got that marshmallow in it. And then I put it in a graham cracker crust, just one of those pre-made graham cracker crusts. And then you let this set either for a few hours or overnight. I made this the night before I planned on eating it. So mine set for almost 24 hours. It was not necessary for it to set that long, but it came together really nicely. And then on top of this, once you're done with it, you can either top it with more Cool Whip or what I did was when I was at Aldi, I saw this pumpkin spy, pumpkin spy, pumpkin spice whipped cream and put that on top and it was amazing. Thank you so much everyone for watching and thank you again, Tiffany, for hosting. Don't forget to check out the playlist linked in my description box down below and leave me a comment saying which of these recipes you'd rather try or if you have a fall cake or fall pie recipe that is your absolute favorite. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button if you're new here and that thumbs up if you enjoyed the video.